Edward problem. But again, if you guys were to work this, if we were to go ahead and complete this, and we were going to integrate this, then we'd have sine of uh, sine of t from x squared to pi halves. And now when we evaluate this, we have sine of x squared minus the sine of pi halves. But it's really, really important. I really want to emphasize this, and I'm not sure if I emphasized this well enough last class period. When you guys now, so we understand all this. Like, you guys see how like quick and easy, like plug it in, and then you just throw it in with x's, right? This fundamental theorem of calculus tells us that we can basically rewrite those. However, when the upper bound, notice how all the upper bound, though, is x for all of those, right? Now, when the upper bound is x squared, notice what happens is now when I have to take my derivative, which I didn't write in, when I have to take my derivative of this, it's just not as easy as taking the derivative like doing over there, because now I have a function within a function. So I would have to apply the chain rule, right? You have to be able to apply the chain rule. So in this case, then we'd go back to the cosine of x times 2x, and then that goes to minus 0. So therefore, we can write our final answer of 2x, or cosine of x. So what the point that I'm trying to make with this is, when you are doing these functions, 